Okay, this is the lesson video for 2.1, which is about simplifying radical expressions. There's just one thing that I want to, we did work a lot with square roots and cube roots in the last unit, um, but I wanted to remind you one thing in this get started activity here. Um, the square root of 121 is 11 because um, 11 times 11 is 121. Um, but notice, I just wanted to remind you that you can't take the square root of a negative number. That's going to come up today. So if I tried to ask you what's the square root of negative 121, there's no real answer to that question because you can't multiply two numbers together and get a negative, two real numbers anyways. Um, but you can take the cube root of a negative number. So if, if I have an odd number here, I can have a negative radicand because negative four times negative four times negative four is negative 64, so that is allowed. If it's a fourth root though, you can't have negative. So this ends up being three, but the fourth root of negative 81, no real answer. Because you can't multiply four numbers and make a negative because the negatives end up canceling. Okay, so that's gonna pop up today. When the index, when the number here Remember, this one has a two. It's even, you cannot have a negative radicand, but when the index is odd, you can have a negative radicand. Okay. We're gonna skip ahead through this part here and just kind of remind you a few of the words I was just saying. So I did mention the word index. That's the number right here. So we did just mention when that number is even, you can't have a negative radicand, which is the number right in the middle inside the square roots or cube roots. And then the entire thing is referred to as the radical. Okay, so our job today is gonna to be simplifying different radical expressions, different expressions with square roots, cube roots, fourth roots. We're gonna go ahead and skip the first example and move right into example two. So example two, we're just reminding ourselves how to write things as mixed radicals, and we're going to be doing it with fractions. We never did that in um, the last chapter, but we did practice writing things as mixed radicals in the last chapter. So I will assume you know how to do that. Um, and if you don't, just go back and review those videos from last, last unit. Um, I'm going to be doing my work up here. Oh, I can fit it in down here. So I'll do 2A right here. So remember when we're trying to write a mixed radical, we're trying to evaluate some of the radical and bring it out of the, of the cube root. So I wanna split up my numbers into parts that are gonna be perfect cubes because I'm working with a cube root. So 16 is eight times two and eight is a perfect cube. So I wanna split the 16 into eight times two, and there's a negative sign, so I'll just leave it with the eight. Um, and then 135, if I try and test, you can do a guess and check, try and think of numbers that divide nice and evenly into 135, you'll see that 135 divides evenly by 27 and five. 27 is the perfect cube, so we can evaluate that exactly. And then we break this apart and put it under two, I call it two roots. Okay, so we're gonna evaluate the part that we can and then leave the part that we cannot. And you are allowed to do this, it's the exact same number, you are allowed to pull apart cube roots by multiplying. Okay, so we're gonna evaluate this first one and leave the two over five because we can't take the cube root of that. But the cube root of negative eight, that evaluates to negative two and the cube root of 27 is exactly three and then you leave the parts that you can't answer. Okay, so that's the idea today. Um, after this example, we're gonna be working with ones that have variables in them, but the main idea is that we're gonna be writing expressions as mixed radicals um, by pulling out the perfect cubes or perfect squares, depending on um, if we're working with a square root or a cube root. Okay, let's move on to the next example here. Um, and look at, these from example three. It says, for which values of the, of the variable is each radical defined? So here's where that negative and positive stuff is gonna come again. Each radical defined. By defined, what it means is, does it, would you be able to answer the question? Does it have a real answer? Um, and notice we've got 
some variables in here. Variables are just numbers that we don't know the value of. So in this first one, let's do A together. I have the square root of 27x squared. Now for square roots or any time the index is even, we have to make sure that the radicand, so 27x squared, must be positive. Another way to write that more quickly with math symbols is saying 27x squared must be greater than or equal to zero. It can be positive or zero. You can take the square root of zero, but just not any negative numbers, okay? 27 is already positive. So the only values for x squared that would be allowed were those that would be positive um, to keep that radicand positive. So x squared must also be positive. Um, but the thing with squaring something is that it already turns it positive. So if I stuck a negative value in for x, like let's say negative 5, and I square it, I get a positive number out. So actually, I can use any value for x, and this is going to work out and give me a positive radicand, because by squaring that number, even if it's negative, I'm going to get a positive value. So x can be any number, any real number. Um, and we don't want to write that sentence out every time because it takes a long time. So the way that we write x can be any real number in math symbols is we write x and then we write this little backwards e. It means in. x can be in the set of all the real numbers. It can be any real number. And you do this little extra line here to indicate you're talking about the set of real numbers. So that would be the values for the variable for which that expression is defined. You're allowed to put any value of x in there and it will work. Okay, let's look at B though. That's not gonna be the same case for example B. I don't have any more room here, so I'm just gonna go above the example and you can do the same. Let's do B. So I have this time the fourth root of negative 12 X cubed. And remember this is an even index there. That means the radicand must be positive. You can't take the fourth root of a negative number. So this entire expression, negative 12 x cubed, must be positive or zero. Or zero. But what we see here is that we have a negative 12. So negative 12 is negative. So that means whatever x cubed is, it should cancel out with that negative to make a positive number. So x cubed must be less than or equal to zero, or else um, we'll have a negative radicand there. So if it's less than or equal to zero, it'll cancel with the negative 12 and make a positive number. So that means if you're going to cube something, um, it keeps it negative. So that means x would have to be less than zero. That is, um, in words, this means x is negative or zero. You want to use the symbols though because it's a lot faster to write and those will, what is, those will be what you see in the answer key as well so you want to be able to understand the answer key and if you're right or not. So you're only allowed to have negative x values in there to make a um, positive radicand because we'll cancel out with the negative 12. Okay so that was example three just looking at these first few expressions here where we have a variable inside our radicand and looking at what variables are allowed to be or what values we can have for our variable. Right underneath here, there's a little important sentence that I want to highlight. We're going to be using this now to evaluate some radicals that have a um, variable inside. So if I want to take the square root of x squared, so since x times x is x squared, the square root of x squared you would think would be x. But it's not as simple as that. The reason is um, because uh, if x is a negative number, this doesn't work out. So let's say what if x is negative 5, for example. Let's take the square root. I have negative 5 squared. So that would be negative 5 times negative 5 is positive 25, and the square root of 25 is positive 5. See how it turned positive? That's because squaring that negative will make it into a positive version, and then it'll be a positive answer. So what we say to counter this is we say that the square root of x squared 
is not just X, but it's the positive version of X, the absolute value of X. If you haven't seen these symbols before, they're called the absolute value symbols. So the absolute value of negative five, for example, is um, uh, five. So um, whenever you're evaluating the square root of a radical um, that's squared like that, you have to put those absolute values. Um, another time it could come up would be, I'll just do it over here, another example. Let's say you were trying to do the square root of x to the power of eight. Um, so x to the four times x to the four is x to the eight. So you would think that square root of x squared is x to the four. Now this one, we can put the absolute values. However, we don't need to, it's redundant because anything to the power of four is already positive. So you don't have to put the absolute values. You only have to put it when it could be a negative answer and then you have to put them to make sure it's positive. But let's say we did x to the power of six, we would have x3 times x3 is x to the power of six. So you would think this would just be x cubed, but that could be a negative number. So we want to put the absolute values around it just to make sense, just to make sure um, we have a positive number. So whenever it could be negative, you want to put the absolute values there to make sure it's positive because the answer to a square root will always be positive. Okay, good. So we're going to use that in the next example here. So in the next example, example number four, I'm going to do every single one of these because lots of different scenarios can pop up with these. We're going to be figuring out for which values the variable of the variable each radical is defined. So just like the last example, but then we're also going to be writing these as a mixed radical too. So one extra step here as well. Okay, so let's look at this first one, 45a squared. Um, so what we want to do is first figure out for which values this radical is defined. So um, we want to, I'll do that in green since I've highlighted that in green already. 45a squared, because this is a square root, the radicand must be positive. Um, 45 is already positive, so we have to make sure a squared is positive too. But a squared, when you square something, is always positive. So that means a can be any real number. You're allowed negative and positive numbers for a. Okay, so part one is done. Now we're going to write this as a mixed radical. So for the number, we can do the same thing as we did before. Try and split it up into parts that can be evaluated and parts that cannot be. For the number 45, we can split it up into 9 times 5. So 45 is 9 times 5. And a squared, actually, I'm going to write it like this. Um, a squared can be, you can take the square root of a squared, and then we'll just leave the 5. Okay. So I'll leave anything at the back that cannot be evaluated. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of a squared is a, but remember, we need the absolute values because it's going to be the positive version, just in case a was negative. And then we're going to have the square root of 5. So this one was 3. This one was absolute value A. And this one we cannot evaluate. So that's the final simplified mixed radical there. Okay. And just as a side note, this again, square root of A squared a times a is a squared, so the answer would be a, and then we need the absolute values to make it the positive version. Okay, let's do b. This time we're doing another square root. Okay, so let's do um, negative 27b to the power of 9. It must be positive because we've got a square root here. Negative 27 is negative, so that means b to the power of 9 has to be negative 2 to counter up that other negative and cancel it out. So that means b is going to have to be a negative number or 0. Okay, and now let's simplify it and break it down into what I can evaluate and what I cannot. Um, 27 is 9 times 3, so I can pull out a 9. b to the power of 9, so that's 9 b's. I can take the square root of b to the power of 8, but I would need one b left over that I couldn't take the square root of. 
So what I would be left over with is a 3 and an extra B. Oops, I have a negative sign as well. Negative 3B is left behind. So I broke the 27. I'll highlight it here so you can see. The 27 is 9 and negative 3. And then the B is B to the power of 8 times B. Okay, so let's see what the answers are. Let's evaluate these. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of b to the power of 8 is b to the power of 4. And I don't need the absolute values because anything to the power of 4 is already positive. So I can leave them off. They're redundant. You would have to put them, though, if it wasn't the power of 4. And then I leave the parts that I cannot evaluate. Okay. There we go. Okay. So let's try C and D. They're going to have different indices now. This one is going to be a fourth root. Fourth root of Z seven seven times Z. Okay. Um, seven Z has to be positive because we have a fourth root, which has an even numbered index. So we have to have a positive radicand. Z's already seven's already positive, so that means Z has to be positive as well to make sure we have a positive number inside. And seven doesn't break up into a perfect fourth root. Fourth, um, that we can take a fourth root of. This cannot be simplified any further. Um, we can't take the fourth root of z, so we just leave it as it is. Cannot be written. As a mixed radical. But we did find the allowable um, values for the variable. Okay, and last one. D, now we have a cube root. 27, 24y to the power of 5. Um, when you have a cube root, remember you can have a negative radicand. You are allowed a positive or a negative radicand. So any variables are going to be allowed. So automatically, we don't have to think too much for this one. All y values are allowed, so y is in the set of real numbers. We don't need to make sure that radicand is positive when it's a cube root, okay? But we can simplify this a little bit. 24, I know, breaks up into 8 times 3. And y to the power of 5, I've got 5 y's. I can take out 3 of them and take the cube root of those and leave the other 2. So I'm going to end up with this. Let's just double check this is good. My 24, I broke that into 8 and 3. That makes sense. And my y to the power of 5, that's 5 y's being multiplied. I broke it up into 3, which I can take the cube root of, and then the remaining 2 left over. Okay, so let's evaluate these now. Cube root of 8, that's 2. The cube root of y cubed, that's going to be y. And I don't actually need the absolute values here, because the answer to a cube root is going to be positive or negative, um, depending on whether the number is positive or negative. So I don't need the absolute values. You only need that for a square root or a fourth root when you have an even index. Um, and that's just going to get take practice, kind of becoming familiar of when to use those absolute values or not. But you don't need them for cube roots, because your answers are not always going to be positive. Okay, and there we go. Okay, and that's it for the lesson. I'm going to stop the recording.